This video is going to be a film study look at how Trenton Simpson and Delshawn Phillips played in the Ravens' 17-10 loss to the Steelers on Sunday. Of course, they both played a lot of snaps. Roquan Smith didn't get on the field at all. Patrick Queen did play 51 snaps, but that's his second lowest number of 2023. Additionally, the Steelers ran the football a lot uh, to various degrees of success. The second drive, of course, was their best of the game. Simpson, who was the Ravens' third-round pick out of Clemson in 2023 draft, he played a season-high 26 snaps on defense, and in that limited amount of time on defense, he had seven tackles, one sack, and two tackles for loss. I think I'll show you all three of those plays. Phillips, who's a really aggressive and athletic fourth-year fourth inside linebacker, uh, played throughout the game. He started the game alongside Queen. He got on the field for a season-high 47 snaps, 13 tackles, one tackle for loss, and just a sick forced fumble on Steelers running back Jalen Warren. I'm going to show the film to illustrate how well I think these two played with a focus against the run, of course, because that was the, the game plan for the Steelers, run the football, shorten the, shorten the game. Um, on a day when a number of other Ravens starters on defense didn't play at all or, or were used sparingly, Jadavion Clowney played a season-low 25 snaps, which is also a season-low in terms of percent for him, 40% of the defense's reps. Kyle Van Noy played 30 snaps, which is typical for him. Like I said, Roquan didn't play at all. Marlon Humphrey, Kyle, Kyle Hamilton, etc., all didn't get in the game at all. Uh, Phillips is a guy who, in the preseason, played some will linebacker to the boundary, but in this game, playing alongside Queen, he was oftentimes playing to the field, which is Roquan's position. I'm interested in his potential for the future, along with Simpson, um, in the event that Queen isn't here um, in 2024. So let's get to the film, let you guys see for yourself uh, how I think both of these guys took advantage of the opportunities that, that were out there on Saturday night, even though the, the weather conditions were very poor and they didn't have the full complement of the defense all around them. So this is a third and one on the first possession, and it's a switch cover three. So basically switch cover three. One of the outside linebackers, edge defenders, if you will, is going to drop back, and you're going to get a blitz from someone else at this. Normally a second-level defender is going to blitz from the other side. In this case, the Ravens have Queen lined up as an outside linebacker to the far side of the field, to the boundary, away from this quads formation by the Steelers. And Van Noy drops out of there. It's a, it's a cover three. I call it a switch cover three, even though you got no corresponding inside linebacker among the four blitzers here. You can see the drop to corners, middle of the field free safety. In this case, man, credit to Mason Rudolph. Right before he gets hit by Matabike, he's going to squeeze this throw into that window to Deontay Johnson. Van Noy and Stone aren't able to finish off Johnson, and Phillips is for his first tackle of the game. Still first possession, 6-2 look by the Ravens. Got to give them credit. I wish they'd been in this a little bit more often, to be honest with you. You can see Queen is the, quote, edge defender to the boundary. Stone has walked up in the box. Some people call this a bear because you walked a strong safety up as an inside linebacker. Let's just call it a 6-2 toss play to uh, Jalen Warren. Stone kind of gets overwhelmed by the offensive lineman who gets out to him. But, man, Jadavion Clowney resets the line of scrimmage back here against this left tackle. And then what that does is it allows Phillips to overflow over the top. So you're going to get this motion. Clowney is going to reset the line of scrimmage. And then Phillips is going to be able to fold over the top of Stone, who just doesn't have the, the size, strength, and explosiveness to deal with this offensive lineman getting out to him. You can see Clowney has driven the left tackle back into the backfield queen also is winning back here as well. Both of them turning the football back inside. Phillips overlaps, makes the tackle along with Travis Jones from the backside for no gain. End zone angle, so you can see it. Travis Jones is here. That's Delshawn Phillips. You're going to watch him fold over the top. Clowney's going to take the left tackle, 65, reset him back into the backfield. There is a little bit of a fumble there by Jalen Warren, who had – Two fumbles during the game and almost a third and a fourth, I guess, if you include this play. Second possession now, split zone concept, really good fit by Patrick Queen. I got a lot to say about the Steelers split zone. A lot of positive things from their perspective, don't get me wrong. Negative things from the Ravens standpoint, if you ask me about awareness of, of the formation and, and what threats are there, uh, depending on 
the amount of receivers that are left to one side of the field. But nonetheless, great fit here by Queen. And then Phillips gets involved, I think helps split the tackle along with them. I think I'll give you the end zone angle after this one. Split zone concept, you got the motion coming from left to right. Steelers did this often to the field, meaning the wing H-back tight end to the boundary was coming back across the formation to the field side. That's when I, what I mean when I say to the field. And then Harris takes this front side. Queen fits it nicely, holding back inside. Him, Owe, and Phillips are there on the tackle, I think, a three-yard gain. Still second possession. Only going to give you the end zone angle of this one. It's a third and one. We're back in that 6-2 look. Phillips with the tackle. It is only a one-yard gain for Najee Harris, but nonetheless, he gets credit for uh, picking up the first down. You can see there's a little bit of extracurricular after the play. I think 65 and Owe getting into it. 73, excuse me, the left guard. Second possession. This goes down actually as a pass play. It's clearly a toss, but the nature of it is such that it's a forward pass by Rudolph, six-yard gain by Harris. Man, the only guy here is is Delshawn Phillips. Now, Phillips happens to be to the boundary on this one with Queen to the field. There's nobody else there, at least on initial contact. Jeremiah Moon down here. Urban are both turning the ball back inside, meaning trying to keep their outside arm free. Phillips' helmet here. He's going to fold back into this gap. Not exactly on that line that I drew you, but he's going to fold back in there, and he's going to be the first guy to make contact. Nobody else is there. If Delshawn Phillips is enough, I'm not saying it's necessarily a touchdown, but it's definitely more than a six-yard game. Phillips is a strong dude. I mean, Najee Harris is a big back, and I thought he had a really nice game, to be honest with you. But Delshawn Phillips stood up to him. This is a brilliant fit on the fourth possession. First and 15 after a penalty on the Steelers. Flex or spread formation, if you will. Phillips, Tavius Robinson have to notice them. Or, or make note of them on this little zone read look. I don't think anybody necessarily cares if Mason Rudolph keeps the football and, and goes around the edge. But nonetheless, Tavius Robinson kind of slow plays it, forcing the give read. Man, when you get the end zone angle of this, you'll see how great of a fit this is by Delshawn Phillips. But the window he's got here is on the back side of this guard. Watch what <clears throat> he does here. I mean, that's a stone-cold stop right there on Najee Harris, who's a big back. This is the one where the announcers talked about Delshawn Phillips um, making first contact and then not finishing the tackle. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, it ends up being a, I think it ends up being a two-yard gain. It's a brilliant play by Delshawn Phillips. The announcers, you know, don't have the benefit that I do of, and, and we all do watching it now, of being able to comment later on after watching the play numerous times, but I'm kind of, I kind of hesitate to say that a guy did or didn't finish a play, especially when at the bottom of the pile, like Delshawn Phillips was 13 times um, in that game. So fourth possession still. Uh, this is going to be Phillips on the forced fumble um, out in space. Man, first of all, it's a great job by Arthur Millette to close down here on Jalen Warren, get a hold of him, and then the punch, man, by Phillips to get that thing out of there. Let you guys see it one more time from the All-22. I think you get a greater appreciation of the force fumble by Phillips from that angle. But nonetheless, I'll show you the end zone. Millette is off screen to our left. Here's Phillips. Warren is going to slide out into the flats. Like I said, it's a third and eight. And it's just a great angle by Phillips. He's zoned off. You look at the relationship that he's got to Warren right now on the inside hip. And then he maintains that relationship because he knows he's got outside help. You don't really get a great sense of the punch from this angle, <clears throat> but you can see he's loaded up here, <clears throat> punches the thing out cleanly, and I think it ends up in Millette's lap somehow. I think it's a brilliant play for from a guy who doesn't have the reputation of being a, a great pass coverage guy, but plays really aggressive, really tough and smart against the run, and here you have him forcing a fumble on a quality NFL running back out in space. I think it's pretty notable. I will have significant film here on Trenton Simpson, but he didn't play in the first half. I feel like I have to do my man Delshawn Phillips justice by showing some of his play in the first half as well.
First and 10, Steelers' seventh possession. Uh, Deontay Johnson and Warren are going to switch this. And what I mean by this is Deontay Johnson, from the bottom side of the screen, is going to basically run a drag. I think Millette goes with him. And then from the opposite side, Jalen Warren is going to go out into the flat. So they're basically switching this. He's here. Deontay Johnson is there. And Phillips is going to track this expertly, if you ask me. Great play and tackle. It's a first and 10 out in space. I think you've got a man match coverage, whatever you want to call it, split field coverage, where you have one coverage call to the bottom side of the screen and another coverage call to the top. And in this case, Phillips, again, talking about tempo in the running back. This is a little different because he doesn't have as much outside help. So he's got to close down once that ball is caught. Another example of the guy playing well in space, if you ask me. Very fundamental inside linebacker, in my opinion. Held him to a three-yard gain. This is two plays later. Uh, Van Noy is going to be on the sack. This is a third and 11. Again, this is Steelers' seventh possession. There are 12 personnel to do this. I'm not sure what they're gaining out of this, unless it was a, uh, a no-huddle situation. But three is going to run vertical, and Delshawn Phillips is just staying inside leverage on him. Nothing special in terms of what he does, to be honest with you. Van Noy with the uh, strip sack. And then the Ravens get the football. Moving forward here. Simpson is now on. Uh, Phillips actually gets credit for this tackle for loss. And then we will be on to some Simpson stuff. But again, he only played 26 snaps. This is an excellent job by Jeremiah Moon uh, down to the bottom side of the screen as the edge defender. Again, like I talked about with Clowney earlier in that 6-2 look, just resetting the line of scrimmage. And then Phillips is unblocked, first of all. It's into the boundary. But great angle, if you ask me, to take the angle and, and get to Najee Harris. Again, he gets credit for a four-yard loss. That angle is what I always look for in my inside linebackers on, on toss, not getting too wide and running parallel with the, the uh, line of scrimmage such that the running back was, was able to cut it back or you weren't able to close ground. Moon makes the play here, if you ask me, from a from a conceptual standpoint. Phillips is the guy who gets credit for the tackle, even though it doesn't bring Najee Harris down. Look, he's a unique talent, man. Fourth-year inside linebacker. I uh, noticed him in the preseason. I had a lot to say about him that, in my opinion, is really good. So very next play, this is 10th possession, if I didn't stay, say that earlier. Steelers go empty. Here's Trenton Simpson. I originally thought this was a read blitz. I don't think so. He's just hiding it very well. He's triggered. You can see the... The closing speed, it's all there. And you'll get another couple of examples of it um, in this video before we're, before we're done. Safe four-man rush by the Ravens with Van Noy dropping out on the tight end to the top side. Van Noy here. Simpson here. Kind of this switch uh, blitz that I talked about earlier. Ravens dropping the safety down. So here's your underneath. Four for your cover three, three deep, three deep, free safety to that side. A little bit hedging to that side. Simpson totally unblocked, end zone angle. I think you get an idea of how well he disguised it. Can't see his face mask, but you can see him on the left here. Not giving it away at all. Heels at four and a half. Maybe he's cheated a half yard on this blitz. Maybe his heels are at four and a quarter. Great burst. Um, easy sack, don't get me wrong from the standpoint of he's just a way better athlete than Mason Rudolph. Great call ends up being a loss of six. Next possession, we're on the 11th possession now. Second and five. And, and this is where I'm going to digress a little bit. I'm going to talk about this left tackle getting up to Simpson, meaning getting directly in his face. Now, I think um, I think Simpson still gets ends up getting involved in a play along with Phillips. There's somebody else down at the bottom of the pile there. I think it's a safety, a DB, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it's Marcus Williams fitting it. This is one of my problems with the way the Ravens play uh, some of these formations, at least Saturday night. Let's whittle it down just to Saturday night. It's 12 personnel, twins up here. So we're, we're motioning to the boundary. There's been multiple plays out of this motion. My problem is we're giving this left tackle an absolute free release to get up to Trenton Simpson. I'm not talking about all game. I'm not talking about every play. On this particular formation, when the Steelers are in 12 personnel or 13 personnel under center and you're getting jet motion, 
It's run or it's play action pass. We have a bonus player outside of us. Me personally, I don't want the design to be such that we're letting ourselves get kicked out so that the strong safety nickel whatever can fit inside of that gap. You can get it done that way. You can get it accomplished that way. Don't get me wrong. This one does end up being five yards for a first down. I'm not willing to concede five yards to Najee Harris all game long, number one. Number two, most of the time that you're getting this play with the jet to the boundary or to the offense's right, defense's left, it's a reverse pivot by the quarterback. You're not getting a reverse pivot and then kicking back out here to boot. If you have that play in there and you've seen it, let me know because I have not. My point is... Letting the left tackle get a free release up to the inside linebacker level I don't think is the most fundamental way to play it. I think the Ravens could have been better uh, with the plan before the game and certainly by the 11th possession, which is what this is. And then Trenton Simpson wouldn't have had an offensive lineman in his face immediately. Him and Marcus Williams could have been clean, make the running back bounce it. Let's be two on two, but I digress. So same possession. Third and six, awesome play out in the flats by Trenton Simpson. One-on-one solo tackle on Najee Harris um, um, to get a stop. Very similar conceptually to what I talked about earlier. Steelers ran this at least three times where you had a receiver from the top side running a drag, the running back going opposite, kind of like I highlighted earlier when Delshawn Phillips made the tackle on the running back. I think it's pretty obvious that the Steelers were trying to get the ball to the running backs here. The Ravens, in this case, Simpson. And earlier, the play that I showed you, Phillips did a nice job of waiting for that running back to get out there. Same play, end zone angle. You'll see Phillips cross. Great job by Simpson, who's a big, strong guy for being as fast and as explosive as he is. And then this one's the fun one, the jet sweep. Really questionable play call. Uh, by Pittsburgh, third down, arc releasing the left tackle outside. If he's able to get away from Simpson, then yeah, you've got a two-on-one. But the bottom line is Simpson is so athletic and such a good tackler when he's got someone in his sights, this is no problem for him. No disrespect towards Jalen Warren. But Simpson's going to make that tackle on Jalen Warren, I think, nine times out of ten. And the last time we saw Jalen Warren, we played him in Pittsburgh, uh, he was like a bowling ball. He was difficult to tackle, but it certainly didn't look like it the other night. Maybe he's not a mudder. Maybe he's not a guy who plays well in the mud. Uh, Trenton Trenton Simpson appears to be one. He appears to be a guy who uh, the Ravens can use sooner rather than later. I would offer to you that Delshawn Phillips and him may be in a competition next year to get on the field more. If you watch those two play next to each other, there's a comparable level of impact. I think it could come, could come down to, this is 2024 projection here, by the way, if Patrick Queen is gone. I think it could come down to which one of those two guys is better in pass coverage to the boundary since presumably Roquan Smith will stay in his role and play to the field. Man, you guys let me know what you think of their performance if you think it was worthy or, or not of a film study video, let me know. Combined 20 tackles between them, three tackles for loss, a forced fumble, and a sack. Pretty incredible production, if you ask me, for two guys that are that are not starters for this team, obviously, in 2023. I think it illustrates the depth that we have. The, the roster that's been built uh, by the front office is rock solid. That even in a game against a team that, well, they're, they're a playoff team at this point, the Steelers are. We were able to have two backup inside linebackers come in and make an impact across uh, 75, 74 plays uh, that they played combined. Appreciate you guys' time, man. Let me know what you think of the film study in the comment section. Um, if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this film study look at Trenton Simpson and Delshawn Phillips and their play in the Week 18 loss to the Steelers, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media so other Ravens fans can enjoy it too.